So starting with prefixes, some of these you probably already know, so I'm going to pause before I give you the definition because I want you to think of it. Hypo means low or deficient, meaning not having enough. The opposite of hypo is hyper, which means high or excessive. A lot of people mix those up. If you do, I just need you to think of a hyper child. When you call a child hyper, they're hyperactive, they have high energy. And hypothermia, hypo, low, therm, temperature, that's low body temperature. A at the front of a word means without or none. Poly means many, like polytheism. Polytheism is religion with many gods. Pan. You better know pan because we all just lived through a pandemic. It was a pandemic because it was everywhere. So pan means all. So here are the most important base words that you will see in the blood chapter. Erythro means red. Leuco means white. Thrombo is related to clots. And sight is related to cells. Now using your powers of logic, what are we going to call a red blood cell, white blood cell, and clotting cell? So those will be erythrocytes, leukocytes, and thrombocytes. Do you know the other word for a thrombocyte that is not related to that root? So another word is platelet. What do we call red blood cells, white blood cells, and clotting cells as a group. So they are called formed elements. The only reason that is, is because we can't just call them cells because two of them are not complete cells. Erythrocytes got rid of their nuclei to make room for more of their hemoglobin, which is their protein that carries oxygen. And thrombocytes, those are little cell fragments. So because those aren't complete cells, we can't just call them blood cells, we say formed elements. So the next two are erythropoiesis and erythropoietin. So erythropoiesis is the creation of red blood cells. Erythropoietin is the hormone that triggers the formation of red blood cells. So tin and cis are both nouns, but cis is a process. Tin, often not always, it's a hormone or a protein. So as a side note, what organ releases erythropoietin. The hormone that releases erythropoietin is the kidney. What is a word that means related to the kidney? Renal. So it's super important you know that because it's going to come up over and over and over again. All right, now using your powers of logic. If erythropoiesis is the formation of red blood cells, what is the formation of white blood cells? So that would be leukopoiesis. And leukopoiesis will be triggered by the hormone leukopoietin. The formation of thrombocytes is triggered by the hormone thrombopoietin, and the process of thrombocyte formation is thrombopoiesis. 
So you should not have to memorize all of these terms individually. As long as you remember the roots, you should be able to remember the pattern. So what will a hemocytoblast be? So we didn't say it, but hemo is related to blood. We already know that site is a cell. Do you remember from AP1 your blasts, like fibroblasts, osteoblasts? If not, does it help you if I tell you that another word for a hemocytoblast is a hematopoietic stem cell? So hematopoietic, now that we have the tick ending, we've just made it into an adjective because it is describing the type of stem cell. Hematopoietic stem cells are stem cells that can differentiate to become all of the different types of formed elements. So hemocytoblast, remember a blast, I call them baby builders. They're the building cells, they're often stem cells. So thrombocytopenia, leukocytopenia, pancytopenia. What does penia mean? Penia is a deficiency or a weakness. So thrombocytopenia, deficiency in platelets. Leukocytopenia, deficiency of white blood cells. Pancytopenia, pan was all. So that's a deficiency of all of your blood cells. Anemia, an, so a or an means without. Anemia, what is emia? Emia, whenever you see that at the end of the word, it is a blood condition. So anemia literally translates to without blood. You can't take that one too literally because being without blood, that is called being dead. Anemia means you have a decrease in red blood cells or a decrease in the quality of your red blood cells. And there's a bunch of different types. I'm not going to talk about all of them, but renal anemia. So renal anemia would be caused by what organ failing? Your kidneys would be failing. Why would your kidneys failing affect your red blood cells? Because the hormone that triggers erythropoiesis, which is the formation of red blood cells, is released by the kidneys. So if your kidneys aren't working, you're not releasing enough erythropoietin. If you're not releasing enough erythropoietin, your body does not know that you should be making red blood cells. Therefore, you end up not having enough red blood cells. Two other types of anemia are hemorrhagic anemia and hemolytic anemia. So remember we said heme or hemato means blood and ragic is related to the suffix rhea like diarrhea whenever you see rhea it means running or flowing diarrhea is diarrhea because dia is through everything's running right through you hemorrhagic anemia your blood is flowing out of you so it's anemia caused by blood loss Hemolytic, what is lysis mean? Lysis is to break or to rupture. Certain conditions cause you to have more fragile red blood cells, which would make them lice. So sickle cell anemia would be an example of a hemolytic anemia because sickle cell anemia causes your blood cells to be fragile. So to give myself some more room, I just erased my terms and rewrote them a little bit smaller. I didn't write the definitions down, partly because I'm lazy, 
and partly because now would be a really good time for you to stop and see, can you still remember what all those roots mean? So if you can't remember what they mean, either look at the words you've already written or wind yourself back about 10, 15 seconds. All right, so what is hemostasis? Hemo, blood, stasis. Think of homeostasis. Stasis means to stay. In homeostasis, homeo means the same. It's you're staying the same or, you know, in a narrow range. Hemostasis, you are stopping your blood from leaving your body. So hemostasis is the process of blood clotting. So thrombus and thrombosis, both related to clots as well. A thrombus is a blood clot where you don't want it. Thrombosis is a condition involving blood clots where you don't want them. So deep vein thrombosis, you have blood clots in your veins where you don't want them. Leukocytosis is excessive white blood cells, possibly due to having an infection. Polycythemia, that's another one that can be a little confusing. We know poly is many. Cyte is cells, emia blood, but it does not mean an excess of all blood cells. It means simply an excess of red blood cells. So if you have polycythemia, it could be a type of cancer. They call that polycythemia vera. Not so fun fact, there's a town that's near me that has a cancer cluster of polycythemia vera. They did a five-year study on like, why does this specific town have so many cases of it? Still, they have no idea. I haven't looked into it lately. Not sure if it's still an issue, probably. Um, but the other reason you might have polycythemia is because you're a cheater. So blood doping is when you put red blood cells into your body to improve your athletic performance. And this can be very dangerous because if you have too many red blood cells, what does that do to your blood? It increases the viscosity of your blood. It increases the thickness, which makes it more likely that you're going to get a clot and have a stroke or something else happen to you. So for people that have that cancer, what they do is they remove their blood from their body and then they spin it out in a centrifuge so that the red blood cells settle out and then they return just the plasma to the body. All right, last set and then we're done. So we have fibrin and fibrinogen. So that IN ending, this is a protein, although like I said, IN does not always mean protein but it probably is, um, and in this case it is. And then you have fibrinogen. This is gonna come up a lot whenever you see ogen at the end of the word, it is the inactive form of something. It is going to generate the active form. So fibrinogen is inactive, it's soluble in your blood. When it becomes activated, it turns into fibrin. Fibrin forms a mesh to kind of plug up your blood clots. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's fine. You just haven't gotten to hemostasis yet. When you get there, remember fibrinogen, ogen, is gonna generate the active form. All right, so these last ones, hypernatremia, hyponatremia, hypocalcemia, hyperkalemia. So hyper, hypo, hyper is high, Hypo is low, emia, blood. So they're all conditions of high and low blood stuff. I'm going to give you a hint. Hypernatremia is either high blood potassium or high blood sodium. So it is high blood sodium. If you could not answer that, that means you really need to memorize a couple ions 
because if you don't know the names of those ions, it's going to make reading and listening to your professor very confusing, even though your professor probably won't be talking about these conditions right now. That's usually in a later chapter. If you don't know that stuff now, though, you should learn it. All right, so hyponatremia, low blood sodium, hypocalcemia, low blood calcium, hyperkalemia, high blood potassium. All right, well, I think that's all I have to say about this. I hope this was helpful. Have a great day and have fun learning.